Okay. I said fire away. <laughs> it's gonna you'll see what it means when I get started. Fire away. But hey, you know, I, I've noticed something. Um and, and it seems like every year I notice this on the internet. You know, we, we kind of scour the internet and to kind of get an idea of what what's going on in the world and in the world and in the church and and most of you that, that follow us and all of you on YouTube that we know that there's a world conspiracy and that there are human beings involved also, not just Satan and his fallen ones and all of that, that they've convinced human beings that uh, this, this is going to be good for them, and it's not. You know, the human beings are being duped. But they, they are working through them, uh, and, and, and every year, at the beginning of the year, it, it seems like they don't waste any time. Now, I don't know if the Bilderbergers have met this year yet or not. They probably haven't, but they don't waste any time with that, what's going on with their plans. And, um, and I've noticed that this whole AI, artificial intelligence thing, it is really ramping up. And the elites are using it to their advantage to take over. And see, the way, that, see, the way they're doing it is they're, they're stopping all dissenters. You know, this is, this, how, this is how warfare works. It's a war. See, I remember when, when Hillary Clinton said, we're, we're losing the information war, right? And they were. And, you know, uh, even Alex Jones, you know, he's got, you may not believe in him, and I'm not sure I do either, but he's got a, his, his show is called um, Infowars, Info right? And that's what it is. It's words. It's ideas. And, and so, just like in any war, there's propaganda. And usually it goes real well before the war even starts. I mean, they, it's a strong push towards the agenda they, they want. And you, could see, you could see it in 2023 big time with the woke thing. You know, that's, you know they're just gaslighting everyone. Well, I'm not a, I'm not a man. I'm a woman. I mean, wow, come on, you know, and, you know, tell a lie big enough and often enough, and, you know, some people will believe it, but we've been around enough, long enough, you know, there's eight, eight plus billion people on the planet, and not a single one of them was born to a man, you know, we're not stupid, but, but this is how they do it, and see, they're pushing this whole global thing and they're using the corporations, and they're using the governments, and the politicians, and the bureaucrats all over the world, and they're using the, the propaganda of um, um, uh, the environment, you know, too much CO2. I'm, I'm sure the, the trees aren't happy about that, yeah. you know, uh, since they, they gobble up CO2 and they give us oxygen, right? You really can't have too much CO2. The plants love it. But see, they can say these things often enough and people start to believe it. And but now, you know, we, we, we've noticed over the years that we're like, you know, we, we grow in subscribers, but we don't really grow in the amount of people watching. And that's curious, you know, we're like, hmm, what's the deal, you know? I mean, I'm, we're not saying we're the greatest teachers in the world, but we're teaching the Bible, and uh, we, we try to stay on the cutting edge of end-time prophecy, and either they're not showing us what the real numbers are on YouTube, I'm speaking to the YouTube audience right now also, or we're being censored or shadow banned, and I've noticed that uh, I was watching a, a Russell Brand today. Some of you might know who Russell Brand is. And he was talking about all this, how their, their podcast is greatly censored and shadow banned, you know, and they have certain words that, that uh, YouTube or Google or whoever it is 
has that the artificial intelligence picks up the world. I mean, we had one this week. You know, they they canceled one of our videos because they said that we said something about COVID, some misinformation. Yeah, I said it, COVID. Some misinformation about COVID. And we protested it, and they said, no, we're still going to take it off. And according to their rules, we didn't say anything. And my point is that they're stopping all dissent. Okay, if you're a dissenter of, and I even heard Klaus Schwab say this week, you know, he's the leader of the WEF, he's at least their spokesperson. And um, he was saying, you know, all these rebels to the, uh, to, that, that are against us in the world, you know, we, we've got to stop this, you know. And this is what we're seeing, that if you don't go with their official narrative, then, um, you know, and you're a dissenter to that because you go, no, no, wait a minute, there's evidence here. Let's, let's go with the truth and not what, what's going to make you more rich and more in control. Well, they don't like that. And I, we, we even watched a video today. Now, this is interesting. I, I'm, just hang with me here. It was Alex Jones and jo, uh, Joe Rogan. And, and Joe Rogan asked Alex Jones, have you ever, have you ever um, gone into another dimension? I think it's something like, he said it something like that way. And he was like, oh, what are you talking about? You know, but, you know, and then he fired up a joint and he toked on it and he handed it to Alex Jones and he took a hit. And then both of them just started weirding out. You know, they're going, oh, wow, you know. Well, I looked at that, you know, and, and he, was, he was going, wow, we're all going to die, you know. And they, they started flipping out, you know. And uh, we're all going to die, we're all going to die, you know. And uh, he says, that, ju that wasn't just marijuana, it was acid and what was the other? Ketamine. Ken ketamine. ketamine. And, um, and, and, and just, so I thought about that for a minute. I'm like, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. This don't seem right. Uh, those guys wouldn't do that. I mean, they have very popular podcasts where they talk about a lot of serious conspiratorial information. And what I found out was it was actually all fake, that they didn't do that at all that it was done through AI. So you see how they could, okay, they, they could take a person like me and they could put words in my mouth that I'm not saying. And how could you prove that you're not? And see their audience, see I went down and read the comments. So I'm like, what's going on here? And then I thought, well, let's see how the, his audience is reacting. Well, a whole lot of them are going, I'm done. Okay, that's it. You know, I, th I thought these people were, you know, on the up and up and, you know, here they are doing dope on, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that we're not watching this anymore. You see that? And see, yeah. it's, a, it's a war. And, and you, and to think about that. And see, I think the way they can get away with it is that it's computer generated through, uh, through AI, artificial intelligence, to make it look like that was real and they can do it without lawsuits. Now think about that. I mean, that is lawlessness. I mean, you know, okay. Yeah. Look at Revelation 13. <coughs> I mean, and that's just one tiny example. Not really tiny. That's pretty big. That's warfare. You know, and in Revelation 13, verse 3, and one of his heads seemed to have a deadly wound, but his death stroke was healed, and the whole world went after the beast in amazement and adoration. They fell down and paid homage to the dragon, Satan, because he had bestowed on the beast all his dominion and authority. See, they made them look like they were smoking a joint. 
they, it might make him look like he's got a deadly head wound. Yeah. See? Look, he, they also praised and worshipped the beast, exclaiming, who is a match for the beast and who can make war against him? How can you make war against that? You see what I'm saying? How do you war against that? I mean, you can. There's a way to do it. But you can't get on their level. See, that's their, that's their battlefield. That's carnal. Yeah, it's high technology, but it's carnal. See, the way we have to fight it is through God's weapons. That's the only way we're going to win. You're not going to beat this. I'm telling you, you won't beat this with natural weapons. They've got everything at their disposal. The deck is stacked, but God. But see, the church, what the church doesn't see is that they're so duped into the whole you know, political war thing that they think, well, you know, it's our responsibility to stand up against this. Well, number one, is it? It may be as a Christian, but standing up against it carnally is not it. And, you know, we, we've talked about this many, many times over and over about dominionism and all these, you know, political and patriotic ways to fight these things, and you're not going to beat them that way. You will beat them, but not that way. Look at Matthew chapter 10. See, I think sometimes that we forget, and, and, and I think sometimes it's because we don't want to be in a war. We don't want to, we want to get along with everybody. We just want to pass peaceful lives and we don't want to fight anybody. You know, we don't. But the devil is not going to let you off because you don't want to fight him. Now, he'll beat you. If you don't fight him, he'll just go ahead and, and mow you down. He'll, he'll just get rid of you. I mean, that's how cruel it is. You ever seen the animal kingdom? Right? You ever watch these videos on the internet of animals? I can't watch them. I, I, I won't watch them. I just don't want to see it. It's, it's cruel. It's so cruel. But that's how Satan is, and he's much worse than that. In fact, the reason the animal kingdom is like that is because Satan fell, and he put that nature in God's creation. You see that? But see, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 34, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. What? I thought Jesus was the Prince of Peace. Wow. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Oh, man. Jesus came to bring a sword? Okay. Verse 35, For I have come to part asunder a man from his father, a daughter from her mother, a newly married wife from her mother-in-law, and a man's foes will be even they of his own household. Wow. I mean, think about that. I mean, that's a tough pill to swallow for my family because my family all loves each other. I mean, we get along and we love each other and we love being around each other, mm -hmm. right? But see, it hadn't come quite down to it yet, you know? And we pray for our families and pray that, you know, God's going to work it out, but we're all going to get to see. See, look at Hebrews chapter 4. You know, we're all going to get to see where everybody really stands in the end. And, you know, it's a tough pill to swallow. There's no doubt about it, you know. You know, the only thing that's going to be left standing is the Word. Mm -hmm. The Word that you build in your life is the only thing that's going to be left standing in the end. 
That's what it's come down to. All your church stuff, all your programs, I mean, fine, okay, great. Glad you got them. Glad you got a choir and, and the music and, you know, the children's ministry and, you know, the young adult ministry and the old people's ministry and the singles ministry and the divorcees ministry. Glad you got all that. Fine. Okay, good. But all of that stuff isn't the word. It's just what we do. We try to help one another out, and that's a good thing. I'm not saying, you know, you love your neighbor as yourself and all that. But, see, that doesn't take the place of your personal relationship with God and His Word. See, all that stuff can be just, to, um, you know, to, to make you feel better about you. Even going to church. And you know what I think about going to church. I think you should follow the word and forsake not the assembling of yourselves together and so much the more as you see the day approaching. But you could just go to church to just kind of make yourself feel okay about it and really not have a great relationship with God that he wants you to have. You know, the, foolish, the, the five wise and the five foolish virgins in Matthew chapter 25 which is all a part of the Olivet Discourse that started in Matthew 24. I mean, think about that. He's telling you about the end times, and he says there's five wise and five foolish. They all had oil. They all had light. They had lamps, right? But five were wise and five were foolish. You can be born again. You can be spirit-filled. You can cast out demons, you can sing in the choir. You can do all those things and still kind of stand aloof from God. You can still not deny yourself and take up your cross. See? And, and the door was shut to the five foolish. They're born again and they're spirit filled. See that? I mean, that's tough. I mean, we all have to deal with that. Every single one of us. You know, I'm telling you, and I got three fingers pointing back at me. I know that. See? And I'm not so swift about all of it. Well, oh, oh, you're up here every Friday. Yeah, because I have to be. I made a commitment to do this. So now, you know, you don't just opt out. You know, you're, oh, well, you're, you know, I'm not going to call him up and go, I don't really want to do it tonight. I just don't cut it. You see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Okay, but so what? Big deal. If I don't really have a really close relationship with the Lord, am I really cutting it? Am I a wise virgin? You know, I can get in the Word and point these things out because the Lord will show me them in the Scripture and I tell them to you and it's cutting me. It's cutting me the same time it's cutting you. And just as deep, maybe even more, you know, the teacher shall be uh, judged by a higher standard. Right? Yes. Read this. Hebrews 4, verse 12. For the word that God speaks is alive and full of power. Let me tell you. People who are around me all the time and know me know I am not a super Christian. No, no, they do. They know, well... He struggles just like all the rest of us. He puts his pants on one leg at a time just like all the rest of us. You know, and at first they might judge me for it, but over time they go, you know, I understand. Yeah. Because I go through the same thing. Because we have not arrived, not single one of us. Nobody has arrived. See? The Word of God speaks is alive and full of power. Make it active, operative, energized, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Penetrating to the dividing line of the soul, the breath of life, and the spirit, the joints and the marrow, the deepest parts of our nature. Exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purposes of the heart. Well, thank God for that. 
But see, it's the Word that does that. And if you resist the Word, you know, be careful that none of you has a wicked, unbelieving heart causing you to stand aloof from the living God. You can stand aloof from God. Right? I mean, that's why God has us fast sometimes because, hey, you, you need to get your... You need to get your flesh under control and your spirit man back on top, right? Mm -hmm. See, it's sifting and analyzing and judging the very thoughts and purpose of the heart. You know, that's why Jesus said, hey, don't judge one another. It didn't, you know, he's saying, don't condemn one another. You can't judge me. No, he's saying, don't condemn one another. It's basically what he's saying when he says don't judge one another. Because in another place it says judge. You should judge between what's right and what ain't right. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. But he's just saying, hey, you know, don't look at the, you got this big beam of timber in your eye and you're looking at the little speck in your brother's eye. Uh -huh. Right? Yeah. And he's going, don't do that. Yeah. You know? I mean, you should, you should be... Uh, thoughtful that your brother has that little speck in his eye and figure out, hey, how can I help him? See, that's fulfilling the law. See that? That's fulfilling the law. You, 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 read, the, you read in Matthew 5, the, the Beatitude, and he says, you know, you've heard it, an eye for an eye, right? And he said, no, love your enemies. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's fulfilling the law. See, the law was a rude outline, a crude outline of what Jesus came to fulfill. Yeah. See that? Yeah. I mean, Jesus, you know, he, he ends the, the chapter in Matthew chapter 5 with, you must be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus is telling us we must be perfect? That's right. That's what he's saying. So what did he do? He raised the bar way on up there. Well, then I'm, I'm finished. I can't do this. Yes, you can. See, because it's by faith. And the faith is in the, in the Word. And the Word is where God wants to commune with you. And if you'll do that and not stand aloof from Him and not push Him away, He will get the transformation process done. It's His work of art. You're His work of art. You're not your own work of art. You see that? See, that's where, the, that's where it gets real. But that's the beauty of it, isn't it? I mean, if it isn't real, do you really want to do all this? It's kind of boring after a while. Seriously. Not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight, but all things are open and exposed, naked and defenseless to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. You know, I, 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 it, it just kind of irks me when I hear people. God doesn't see my sin. I'm covered in the blood. Well, what? Not a creature exists. It's concealed from His sight. Everything is open and exposed. Yeah, Jesus' blood's covering your sin, but He sees it. He sees every bit of it. And you ain't fooling him. Yeah. And you saying, well, he, God doesn't see me because I'm just covered in the blood. No. You're spiritualizing. Mm -hmm. No, his job as a heavenly father is to discipline you. If he sees you doing wrong, he's going to put his thumb on that. Please do. Please do. Right. You know, reproofs of discipline are the way of life. Yeah. Right? We, we want the pressure off. No. That, that's not Christianity. Christianity is pressure. It's flip, flipsis. Right? Flip, flipsis. That's the Greek word. It's trouble. In this world, you shall have trouble. In the Christian church, you shall have trouble. In your walk with the Lord, you shall have trouble. You will. Why? Because your flesh... And you have a sin nature, and the Holy Spirit's doing a scrub job. And you can push Him away all you want, but you're only doing yourself harm. Right? And see, I, 
I'm saying, hey, you don't need to look at anybody else. Just look at your own life. You got enough mess. You can't change me just like I can't change you. I can't change you. We can get together and we can, we can talk about the Word and the Holy Spirit will anoint and the Holy Spirit will minister. But you can't change me and I can't change you. Heck, I can't even change myself hardly. You know what I mean? See, change comes when God get, convicts your life and He gives you a re revelation. Eh, I don't really like that. That's not good. The way you're thinking there, that's not good. See, and you, you don't know about mine and I don't know about yours. See, I, I don't really want to know. That's your relationship with God. I got enough to deal with just with me. You see what I'm saying? See, but see, that's the word. And see, it's a two-edged sword. See, you better be careful how you use the word. Because it's two-edged. You might go cutting yourself up. See what I'm saying? Look at Revelation 1. I didn't come to bring peace on the earth, but a sword. <laughs> wow. <coughs> a sword. Mm. That's tough stuff. Now verse 11, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamon, Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And I turned to see whose was the voice that was speaking to me. This is John on the Isle of Patmos. Uh, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands one like the Son of Man, clothed with a robe that reached to his feet, with a girdle of gold about his breast. His head and his hair were white as wool, as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet glowed like burnished bronze, as if it is refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the sound of many waters. And in his right hand he held seven stars, and from his mouth came forth a sharp, two-edged sword. His face was like the sun shining full day. See, from his mouth came the sharp, two-edged sword. Look at chapter 19. Because he's the word. And he speaks it from his mouth. And the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It's a sword. Uh, well, we're not going to read all of that because it's, we need to move on. But the, verse 14, The troops of heaven clothed in linen, dazzling clean, followed Jesus on white horses. Right? And from his mouth goes forth a sharp sword, which he can smite the nations. And he will shepherd and control them with a staff of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fierceness of his wrath and the indignation of God, the all-ruler. On his garment and on his thigh, he has name entitled, inscribed, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hey, that's pretty good news. King of kings. Hello kings and priests unto God. Yeah. Say he's your king. Yes. But you're king too. Yeah. Yeah. He's the big K with a little K. Right. See yeah. something like that. And then I saw in a, sing, uh, a single angel stationed the sun's light with a mighty voice he shouted to all the birds fly across the sky come and gather yourselves together for the great supper of God that you may feast on the flesh of the rulers flesh of generals, captains, the flesh of powerful and mighty men, 
the flesh of horses and their riders, the flesh of all humanity, both free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the rulers and leaders of the earth who are doomed to pass away. See, they're passing away here. They're doomed because he's coming. Jesus is coming. Right? And with him the false prophet who in the presence had worked wonders and performed miracles in which he led astray those who accepted and permitted to be placed upon them the mark of the beast and those who paid homage and gave divine hours to the, honors to the statue. Both of them were hurled alive into the fiery lake that burns and blazes with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword that issues from the mouth of him who is mounted on the horse, and all the birds fed ravenously. See, all this stuff you're seeing out there today in your fake news medias and all the fake stuff all over the internet and all these people that are running these organizations that have honed everything down to where they, they have a a official narrative for the world and nobody can think for themselves, they're going to feed ravenously upon them. See, these people need to see this so they don't have to go through this. See? There's still time to repent. You can still repent. But see, it's the sword that issues from the mouth of Jesus. He's come to bring a sword. Look at Revelation 2. And see, you know, judgment begins at the house of God. And if it begins with, with us, what will become of those who, you know, did not accept God's will? Right? But still, judgment begins at the house of God. God deals with His kids. See, when you read the Word, it's judging you. <laughs> judgment begins at the house of God. If the righteous are barely saved, what will become of the godless and the wicked? See? We put our pants on one leg at a time just like them. It's just that we're going, oh, Lord, have mercy on us. We ain't right with you, and we know it. The, the reverential fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of wisdom, the very choice part, I think it says. Revelation 2, verse 12. Then the angel of the assembly in Pergamum write, These are the words of him who has and wields the sharp, two-edged sword. I know where you live, a place where Satan sits enthroned. Yet you are clinging to and holding fast my name, and you did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one who was martyred in your midst, where Satan dwells. See, Satan had joined your church. Satan ain't going to leave you alone because you're a good little Christian. Now he actually going to double up on you. Sorry. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have some people there that are clinging to the teaching of Balaam who taught Balak to set a trap and a stumbling block before the sons of Israel to entice them to eat food that's been sacrificed to idols and to practice lewdness. It's epidemic in the church. Just so you'll know. You also have some who are in a similar way are clinging to the teaching of the Nicolaitan, those corruptors of the people, whose, which thing I hate. Nico is, uh, is uh, victory, and Laetans is the victory over the laity. See? That's why you don't need a top-down uh, run church. You should all, all, all the church, that we all come to, this, to oneness in the faith, in the full and accurate knowledge of the Son of God, that we all might re come to really mature manhood, which is nothing less than the standard height of Christ's own perfection. Right? 
No, we don't need some big mucky muck at the top in $2,000 suits telling us all what the Word says. No. Uh, I mean, he may say something to you, but it's your, it's your responsibility to, to test and prove all things until you recognize what's good. See, it's your responsibility. See, we, we do this top-down, you know, Americanized version of a corporation, and it is not God's will. You know, don't look at me. I'm not the big hoss here. I'm just like you. We're just reading the word. <laughs> Jesus is the big cheese. Sorry, Jesus. I didn't mean to call you the big cheese, but he's Jesus the is the boss. Yeah. Yeah, he's the head. Not us. We're we're just we just we just plant and water. Plant and water. We're gardeners. See? Okay. Repent. Or else I will come to you quickly and fight against you, them, with the sword of my mouth. You mean Jesus would come to his church and fight against us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you are in that kind of an idolatry. If there's that kind of rampant sin in your church, Jesus is going to fight against you. In the church of who he's the head. Oh, but it's all grace. Your best life. Wow. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I mean, he goes on down. He tells this other church in Thyatira. Verse 21, I gave her time to repent. She has no desire to repent. and Refused to do so. Take note, I will throw her on a bed of anguish and those who commit adultery with her and bring them down to pressing distress and severe affliction lest they turn away their minds from conduct. See, their minds, because your mind is where it starts. Because it's warfare. Satan is the tempter and he will send thoughts into your mind, but they're not your thoughts. You know, every thought you have ain't your thought. Satan is the tempter. He's the deceiver and seducer of all humanity the world over. Right? He's stationed himself now in front of the woman who's about to be delivered to the man-child, the church, who the overcomer is coming out of, is being birthed, and he's stationed in front of us right now, and he's tempting people. He's testing you. Right? Satan is doing it. Not God. Satan is doing it. He's putting thoughts in your mind. And it doesn't even have to be all these nasty thoughts like this. You know, it could be, well, you know, I'm nobody. I never do anything for the Lord. You know, they don't really like me there. <laughs> All these things, these are attacks from the enemy. These are darts. These are arrows. You're in a war. You are in a war. Well, they don't really love me. And hey, it can be, seem real. I mean, it get all down in you and you, you get weepy about it. Depressed about it. And one to quit. And that ain't your thoughts. That was Satan's thoughts. But it becomes your thoughts when you start entertaining them. Yeah, you ever entertain thoughts? Yes. Oh man, Lord have mercy. I have entertained way too many thoughts. And then they're my thoughts. And then I need to call up my buddy and go, man, you got to take me through some deliverance. <laughs> and he calls a few demons off of me, and I go, whew, I think I can live to fight another day. Sometimes you just got to get a little help. Yeah. You know, that's what it's good about having a body. We can help each other. Don't let Satan isolate you.
But even if, hey, internet audience, if you're out there and you're isolated, we understand. You can go to Jesus. He is there. He will listen to you. If you have to cast out your own demons, you can do it. You can do it in the name of Jesus. Just ask God for discernment and just get with it. And just start calling Him out. And get, boot Him out. Get Him out of your house. Don't, don't even let Him linger around your living room. Open the front door and command Him out of there. And get real about it. You see? See, that, that's, that's like your will saying, hey, I believe what I'm doing here. And do it. He's got to go. Just saying. All right. The Psalm 7. I'm really ministering to myself tonight. But see, I want to also reach out to our YouTube audience because it is getting more and more that they're labeling us as the dissenters. We ain't going along with the New World Order. We ain't going along with all of it. And they don't like that. And we may not be on the internet much longer. Not because we want to quit. They may not allow it. And it may be sooner than you think. And I would say to our YouTube audience, and a lot of you have been with us for a long time, and we... It's beautiful. We love it. You know, this is, it's our outreach. You know, we want to reach out. You know, to whom much is given, much is required. You know, freely we receive and freely we give. And we love giving. But I would back up what we have on YouTube. I, I would encourage you to do that. Put it on a thumb drive or back it up to some hard drive or however you do that. I don't know all that stuff. But if you all know how to do it, you might want to do it. Now, we may move to another platform. We may have to. I mean, they, they accused us this week of doing something we didn't do. And when we protested, they said, no, it's too bad. You know, we're talking to a machine. Come on, you're talking to a machine. That's, you know, it's just the way it is. All right, Psalms uh, 7, verse 12 if a man does not turn and repent, God will wet his sword. He has strung and bent his huge bow and made it ready. He has prepared for him deadly weapons. He makes his arrows fiery shafts. See? Jesus came to bring a sword. You know, we all need Him. We're all sinful. We're undone. We're a mess. We're broken. And we need Jesus. We need His saving Word in our life. Yeah, we need the saving blood. Yeah, no doubt about it. We need His saving grace. We need His Word in our life. I need His Word more in my life. The word implanted in your heart has the power to save your soul. See, our soul needs to be saved. I'm saved for eternity. We're not talking about that. See, God's, God's not lowering the, um, the, bar? the bar. God's not lowering the bar. He's not, the bar is up here. It doesn't ever lower. He doesn't lower the bar. See? We come in, the salvation's free. I'm, I'm, I'm saved. I'm saved from eternal death. I'm saved. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about bringing forth God's will in our life in the earth now. And since we know we're in the last days and Jesus is coming back and bringing God's kingdom to the earth, see, we got to be prepared for Him. And the way we get prepared for Him is through His Word because we have a sacred appointment. It's an appointment. It's sacred. See? It's sacred. If it's not sacred, what are we doing? 
Well, who cares? But it is. It is sacred. It's a sacred appointment. Each one of you has it. He's called personally each one of you. See? That's what we're talking about. Go to Revelation chapter 6. Okay, in Revelation 6, we have these four horsemen. If you want to look up here, we have a white horse is the first one, and then a red horse, flaming red, and then the black horse, and then the pale horse, which is Chloe, and, and Chloe in Greek means green. It's a green horse. Ever seen a green horse? Me neither. Genetically modified. <laughs> Rather, it's the environmental movement that they're using to deceive the whole world. Right? Just like they use pharmacia to deceive the whole world. You know, it's just amazing. It's amazing. The food industry in America, we have more than any other time in history and in the world. We can produce enough food to feed the planet ten times over. We have the technology, and what do they do? They make it worse and worse. M less nutritious, more chemicals, more preservatives, more pesticides, more toxins, more, 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 to where everybody's fat. And then you give them Ozempic. And you can be fat, and you can go through your life fat, and we'll give you Ozempic, and you'll be just fine. Pharmacia is deceiving and seducing the whole world. And that is who is funding your news media and your politicians. Pharmacia. It's through the rich men of the earth. So we have this white horse, you know, he's carrying a toxon. No, a toxon. It's, it's the word toxic we get in, see? We're not going to talk about that tonight. Because I don't want them to take it down again. The second seal of... Uh, I heard a living creature call out, verse 3, Come and see. And another horse came out flaming red. And its rider was empowered to take peace from the earth. Well, then Jesus said, I've come to... You think I've come to bring peace? No, I've come to bring a sword. Is this Jesus? No. Now, this is a counterfeit to Jesus. See, Satan counterfeits everything God does. Come to take peace from the earth so that men slaughtered one another. And he was given a huge sword. Well, what is it? Is it, is it uh, a nuclear weapon? Is it a uh, directed energy weapon? Huh? What is it? It's a sword. Jesus' issues from his mouth. So does theirs. It's propaganda. It's lies. The AI can get anybody saying anything it wants. That's a huge sword. How can there be any law and order after that? It's lawlessness. It says that men slaughtered one another. Will you? Will you? Next thing you know, they just get of it, rid of us through civil war or whatever. Whatever they get to where men slaughter one another. You see it all the time, right? That's what that is. Flaming red. See, and now they have artificial intelligence and, and chat, GPT, whatever it is. You know, they're in the first one and GPT-2, you know, and 
it's just exponential to where now, you know, just like with the Terminator and all that stuff, they don't need us humans. See, and look, the AI will be in the statue of the beast, of the image of the beast. The abomination of desolation will be AI and everybody will interface with the statue of the image of the beast. The abomination of desolation will be through the AI. And see, they're putting all these nanobots in everybody, in your bodies, and they, they, they put all these systems in you and then they give you a tattoo that probably you can't even see it. And big deal if you can or you can't. The mark of the beast and that's how you will interface and you can't buy or sell and you take that mark. And your body will then be a, a genetically modified organization, or, organization <laughs> organism, a GMO, Okay, and your body will not, then you will not be your own. Now you're a commodity. Now you belong to who knows who. The Antichrist. Right, the Antichrist, exactly. See how they're doing that? Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. And they don't like the dissenters, and that's why I tell the YouTube audience, uh, back up your stuff if you want it, because we, we might not even get to meet together in the future. It's a scary reality, isn't it? Yeah, I've heard other people say that. Yeah. See, look, go back to Revelation 13. See, a huge sword. You know, over there in Daniel chapter 12, it says... Uh, let me look, hold your finger there and go to Daniel 12. Daniel 12? Da Daniel 12, yes. <laughs> Daniel 12, of course, you know, it's an end time chapter. And it's beautiful. It's where we get, well, it's there. In verse 4 he says, But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Well, now the book's being unsealed. And that's why we know that the abomination of desolation is 1290 days after they cut off the sacrifice. We didn't know that before because it was sealed. Now we're in the time of the end. It got unsealed and we saw it. See? Mm -hmm. It's important that you know that. See? Many shall run to and fro and search anxiously, and knowledge shall be increased and become great. Now, yeah, if many are running to, you know, only when my judgments are in the earth, when the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness, if people, and when they do, not if, when people start to see, oh no, we are living in the last days, oh no, this is the mark of the beast coming they will begin to search anxiously and biblical knowledge will increase and become great. But guess what? Satan's knowledge will increase and become great through and it's too and it's going to be through artificial intelligence. See? It's going to be huge. It already is. You can ask Siri or Alexa any question in the world. You can ask them that she'll tell you right back. Right? Even about the apocalypse. Even about what? The apocalypse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the unveiling. They, the world calls it the apocalypse. That means bad stuff. Well, it's, it means unveiling. See, Jesus unveiled the revelation to us. Apocalypso. Okay, so go back to Revelation 13. Who can be a match for the beast? Who can make war against him, right? It's an information war. And it's lies. 
See, when, when Satan speaks, he speaks a lie and that's all he can speak because that's what's natural to him. Verse 5, And the beast was given the power of speech. He's given the power of speech. See? It's information war. Uttering boastful and blasphemous words, he's given freedom to exert his authority for 42 months. He opens his mouth. Speak slanders against God, blaspheming His name and His abode, vilifying those who live in heaven. He's further permitted to wage war on God's holy people and to overcome them. Oh no! Oh well, those are after the ones that come after the rapture. No. They ain't no pre-trib rapture. Go to the wilderness where the Holy Spirit's leading you. <laughs> if you will listen... Powers give him, him to extend his authority over every tribe and people and tongue and language. And nation. Yeah, and nations rather. And all the inhabitants of the earth will fall down and pay adoration and homage to them. Everyone whose name has not been recorded in the book of life of the Lamb. Whoever leads into captivity will himself go into captivity. If anyone slays with the sword, with the sword must he be slain. See that? That's why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying, you know, they're trying to bait you into one camp or another so that you'll go to war using carnal weapons. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds and the casting down of everything that exalts itself against the true knowledge of God. See, this is where it's going to take faith. This is the time for the faith of the saints, right? This is when we got to, you know, go the last six miles of the marathon. But see, God can give us supernatural strength. It doesn't have to be like a natural marathon. See, but when you get on their level, the playing field is not balanced. They got all the advantage against you. It's like going to Vegas. Vegas is a ripoff. You know that, right? <laughs> Just saying. Yeah. Psalm 57. to hear the, Lee, the pages turn <coughs> rather than flick the phone. Well, that's okay too though. You know, whatever. Uh, Psalm 57, 4. My life is among lions. I must lie among those who are, who's are aflame. Right? Remember? A fiery red sword. A fiery red um, horse. Thank you. Those who are aflame, the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows, their tongues sharp swords. <coughs> sharp swords, right? Go to Psalm 59. It's on the next page. Verse 1. Deliver me from my enemies, O oh my God. Defend and protect me from those who rise up against me. YouTube. Deliver me from all that lift me ab above those who work evil and save me from the bloodthirsty men. For behold, they lie in wait for my life, fierce and mighty men banding together against me, not for my transgression nor for any sin of mine. They run and prepare themselves, though there is no fault in me. Rise yourself, arouse yourself, O Lord, and meet and help me. See and see. You, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, arise to visit all the nations. 
spare none and be not merciful to any who treacherously plot evil. They return at evening. They howl and snarl like dogs. They go prowling about the city. They belch out insults with their mouths. Swords of sarcasm, ridicule, slander, and lies are on their lips. For who, they think, hears us? But you, O Lord, will laugh them in scorn. You will hold all nations in derision. O oh, my strength, I will watch and give heed to you and sing praises. For God is my defense. He's my high tower, right? Look at Psalm 44. You know, I said it last week, I think, or the week before. You know, Jesus said, look, if my kingdom were of this world, my followers, would buy, they'd be taking up arms and defending me. You remember when Jesus, when Judas came to betray him, and one of them caught, cut the ear off of the guy, right? And Jesus reached up and healed the guy. Healed, healed his ear. Cut it off. See, but what, what did Jesus do? Jesus healed his ear. You know, these guys were coming to put him to death. He said something to Peter right at right you know, That was impertinent. You know, there was one place where, where they said, Lord, what, well, we have two swords. He says, that's enough. <laughs> See? Because Jesus knows, you know, that's not how we fight. See? You got two swords? Yeah, it's enough. We'll use it to cut up our lamb chops or whatever. See, that's not what, how God fights. It's how, not how we are to fight. Mm -hmm. Psalm 44. Okay. Verse 1. We have heard with our ears, O God. Our fathers have told us what work you did in their days, in the days of old. You drove out the nations with your hand, and it was your power that gave Israel a home by rooting out the heathen peoples. But Israel you spread out, for they got not to the land of Canaan in, Canaan in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them, but their right hand and your arm, but your right hand and your arm and the light of your countenance did it because you were favorable towards and did delight in them. You are my king, O God. Command victories and deliverances for Jacob. Through you shall we push down our enemies. Through your name shall we tread them under who rise up against us. For I will not trust in and lean on my bow, neither shall my sword save me. But you have saved us from our foes and have put them to shame who hate us. See, that's the way it is with us. This is our future. This is where we're going. We're not taking Coke or Pepsi. We're not taking Republican or Democrat. We're not taking right or left. We're not taking any of that that the world is trying to pressure us into. No, we're going with Jesus. We're going to follow the word. We're going to follow the lamb wherever he goes. And with that, we have, to, we have to listen to the Holy Spirit. We need discernment. But it's through the word. Let's read one more scripture and then we'll close. That probably went on. Psalm 64. This is a good one to end on. 64. You know, over there in Daniel, I think it's verse 33, he said, and the, many of those who, you know, are righteous, it says, they'll fall by sword and captivity and plunder for many days. You see that? Why? Why are we falling by that? Because... We have got to quit receiving the lies of the enemy. 
we kind of quit trying to mix this and that with the Word. We fall by the sword when we do that. And, you know, it's prophesied that that'll happen, and we don't need to go through that. See? NAR or the Dominionist movement or all that stuff, you're, you're going to fall by the sword, by captivity and plunder for many days if you don't let that go. No. We're, you know, have you begun in the spirit and you're going to come to, to perfection in the flesh? No. See, we just read it. It's not by our sword. It's not by our arm. It's God that does it. Right? Hear my voice, O God, in my complaint. Guard and preserve my life from the terror of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel and conspiracy of the ungodly from the scheming of evildoers. Right? You see it all over. Who wet their tongues like a sword. Who aim venomous words like arrows. Who shoot from ambush at the blameless man. Suddenly do they shoot at him without self-reproach or fear. They encourage themselves in an evil purpose. They talk of laying snares secretly. They say, who will discover us? They think out acts of injustice and say, we have accomplished a well-devised thing. For the inward thoughts of each one and his heart is deep, but God will shoot an unexpected arrow at them. And suddenly shall they be wounded. They will be made to stumble, their own tongues turning against them. All who gaze upon them will shake their heads and flee away. And all men shall fear and be in awe. And they will declare the work of God, for they will wisely consider and acknowledge that it is His doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust and shall trust and take refuge in Him. And all the upright in heart shall glory and offer praise. Praise God. See? We begin in the Spirit and we end in the Spirit. God's fighting our battle. But we got to do it through Him. Not by the, our sword, not by the arm of the flesh. So Father, we ask that you teach us your ways and deliver us from all of our carnality. Yes. And that, that the Holy Spirit will teach us wisdom and that you will... You will deliver us from all of our enemies, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Made me think of.